Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know about challenges that is that number one, affliction and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Let me deliver somebody right away. There are many of us who are going through all kinds of situations right now. From finance, to your health, to maybe marriage, to whatever it is. And we have been made to think that the entire reason why everything is happening to us is because of lack of faith. Let me tell you something. I have learned by experience, especially for students. It's not every student who is suffering in class that is as a result of carelessness or laziness. It's easy to conclude that people and look at them and say your CGP is on one point something. You know, it's a terrible thing. You are an embarrassment to redemption. However, it may not be everybody, but let me tell you, there are a few people that they, there is a strange pathway in the spirit that they are taking, that is taking them to where they themselves do not know. Just follow me. There are many families that may not understand why in spite of their righteousness and their love for God, their tithing and giving and their committal to spiritual things. It looks like there are certain orchestrations that just seem to draw them back. It's like a, a cycle of woes and pain. I'm telling you this, that there are dimensions of the dealings of the spirit that are not demonic. It is called the mystery of the fullness of affliction. This, this teaching is not for babes. It's not just receive, receive. It, because I'm explaining to some of you the mystery behind what is happening in your life. In spite of your prayer, you hear God about everything but not that situation. And God looks silent. Lord, what is all this? And it looks like you receive a prophetic word for others, but for you, you have fasted for one week at the end of the prayer. All the scriptures you had were about comfort. I want you to know that there is a school you are passing through. And what you are receiving is a lecture. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Moses did not know why he ran away. And for 40 years, there were certain processes he was going through he did not understand until the god of israel called him and told him that he there was a prophecy upon his life prophecies do not just manifest just because you love god there is a pathway it may not be for everybody but everyone who truly wants to be used by god goes through this pathway the fullness of affliction like a blacksmith right that melts metals to remove their impurities and now begins to carve them there are several um expressions in the bible that are used to describe this process the potter and the clay the blacksmith there are all kinds of processes the bible begins to tell us about the potter and the clay how that he picks up the clay smashes it right and now begins to mold it into fashion The fullness of affliction is a is a pathway in the spirit is the route that leads you to galatians 2 20 that realm called i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and this life that i live in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for you come to a point where you have no life in your own. Your ego is stung until there is nothing to sting it again. There are all kinds of things that happen to you. I want you to know that there are people sitting right now, right here, that are going through that pathway in the spirit. You prayed and you said, God, use me. Anoint me and make me mighty. And God said, Amen to that prayer. You just did not know that what is happening to you is amen to your prayer. Lord, make me that multi-billionaire businessman. I will advocate for the kingdom. And God said, amen. It's just that we have not been taught how God answers our prayers. We have only been taught that result is the only proof that God has answered your prayer. But let me tell you, when you begin to mature in the things of the spirit, the fullness of affliction can be an answer to your greatest prayer. Is God speaking to us?
So number one, afflictions and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Please look at me. Many of you have been fasting and have been saying, Lord, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. We taught on faith, I think it was last week or, or week after last. Many of us have been taught, if you pray about something and it does not happen, you never had faith. If you had faith, it would have happened. Let me tell you, I honor and I respect those teachings, but it depends on the dimension you are standing in the spirit for you to be able to say some things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Not every affliction is as a result of lack of faith. There are men who you are going through the fire right now because you have faith. That's the reason why you are going through it. I feel God is ministering to people. Hallelujah. You stand on that board and you see what you did not want to see. And tears rolling down your eyes, you say, Lord, you are faithful. And other people look at you and say, when will you stop your laziness? There's no need trying to explain to them. It's a pathway you don't go in group. You go alone. It's a lonely road. No matter how men love you, when you get to the end of that road, they must leave you. You can be in a relationship with your darling and sweetheart, you will part ways. Are you getting what? The fullness of affliction is customized with your name on it. Nobody can help you to take the fire out of love. You know that thing they used to say, Mba Keba Serija. No way. It doesn't work when you are passing through the fullness of affliction. You pass alone. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number two, your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. Your tears and your expressions of pain and do not necessarily reflect unbelief. You must learn this. There are so many people who have been stopped from crying in the church. Why are you crying? Rejoice. Look, let me tell you. It's not every seed you sow crying. There is he that weepeth bearing precious seeds it's not everything in life that happens with joy please are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man fool you there are things that will happen in your life no matter how anointed you are it will bring tears out of your eyes tears and expressions of pain are not a sign of unbelief learn this and jesus wept the bible didn't say and he wept he mentioned the name of the person who cried and your Jesus went. It's alright to cry and express pain. You get to a point in your life where it overwhelms you. There are times that lack of finances will eat you up. And you stand and you are saying, I can follow one allergy somewhere and be blessed. But I love God and I stay. But the truth is, the reality at the moment is that there is no food. It's not like somebody is bringing food in the evening. There's nobody that is sending you money anywhere. The fullness of affliction. The place where mighty men are made. That's, that's where reformers emerge. For David, it was the cave of Adullam. He ran and he stayed there. On asylum, he ran away. Ran away from civilization. And he hid there. It was the place where he was made. The wilderness was one place where he was made again. You see it all through scriptures that men were separated in unpleasant places. Read your Bible and see prophets who God made to sleep on one side of the bed. Have you read that? Read of prophets that God made to mix animal dung. Read of prophets who were made to marry prostitutes. After suffering to keep themselves for decades, God said, the nature of my dealing with you will necessitate you marrying a prostitute. So long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know that many of you may not appreciate this teaching, but this is the kind of teaching that will make you powerful. Hallelujah. Mysteriously at a point in my life, I've shared my story. When I was diagnosed with a fungal infection, I prayed every prayer I know how to pray. Let me tell you. If you say I didn't have faith, you are joking. I had the, the whole faith in the world. They took me from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital. Took samples of my head. 
I became an object of experiment. In that darkness, I began to feel the pain of what it means to have an seemingly it was they couldn't find out what was wrong that's the painful part i've shared with you the story my mom has been here when she had to use iron sponge what you used to scrub the back of your pot huh that's what was used on my head it's called the furnace of affliction that's why when some people come out of that furnace nothing moves them again you just shout and they are looking at you after i went see look let me a sign let me tell you a proof that you are passing through that what made you cry yesterday makes you laugh today you think about it somebody just says are you going to sleep with me as before for the money and you laugh they carry your money and go and they say there's no food and you say lord i give you glory you sit down in the midst of fire and you lie down and sleep you and the fire have become one the bible says you walk through it are you hearing what I'm saying? A time comes in the furnace of affliction where all your fears happen to you and there is nothing to fear again. The fear of lack of membership happened. The fear of lack of money happened. The fear of the carryover happened. At the end of it, when you say, God, you are faithful, there is no strings attached. You suspected the relationship would break. Yes, it broke. But in all, you have learned to be strong. Look, let me tell you. That, that's the secret of courage. You see some men go and see the devil. Even the devil doesn't know how to disturb them again. Because he doesn't know which part of their life he will touch. Satan, Satan is not a fool. I've taught you this. He will touch your finances and see your reaction. If you do audition, he won't touch it again. Because it means it doesn't matter to you. Then he will touch your health. There is an aspect of your life you will touch. The way you will react, the devil will sing praise and worship and dance around and say, I found it. I found it. For many of us, every part he touches, you shout. And so God says, no, you are a babe. You may be the president of your ministry, but that furnace of affliction touches every area of your life until you become dead. A dead man doesn't have feelings again. So they just call you and say, Mr. Man, your car had a ghastly motor accident and you laugh. You say, please, can I, can we continue what we are discussing? And people say, it's like you didn't hear me. Your 2.5 million car just crashed. You say, Lord, I give you praise. Let's continue. The fullness of affliction has done something to you. You are not a pure human being again. Something spiritual has altered your humanity. It has made you strong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Absolutely. This is the kind of furnace of affliction that can make women to carry their dead children. They say, Madam, your child just died. And they look and tears are coming out of their eyes. And they are saying, Lord, you are faithful. When is the burial date? And you are saying, what sort of insensitive person? No, 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 no. The opposite of what I'm telling you is excessive emotionalism. And that's what the, the system of darkness is doing. So people send every picture on Facebook and Twitter. You are angry, you, you snap yourself and say, I'm angry. And then five minutes later, you eat and say, now yam has come. You see, that, that bad attitude is as a result of lack of the fullness of affliction. There is a way you are bent. They look at you and they say, after next week, they are coming to pack up your ministry and you laugh. Oh my God is faithful. You become unperturbed. You are not touched by anything. May God take us to that realm. If you don't get to that realm, worry alone will kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not get to that realm, I guarantee you, worry will kill you. Have you seen men who just sit down on their veranda and die? Have you seen people like that? They just sit down, bring me a stool and they sit down and die. A man will go to a mango tree and put rope by himself right and put the rope from under up and hang himself ready go and lift the rope and hang himself on a tree the fullness of affliction makes you a spiritual man please hear me it makes you a true spiritual man 
if you have never cried, you have not gone through the furnace of affliction. I guarantee you, you have been passing through AC and the rest. The furnace of affliction will bring tears in your eyes. You will sit down one day and the whole world will change. You, you will not find value in anything. One day you will sit down and you will look at your lecturer. As he's teaching, you are thinking as if you are 70 years old. You are just thinking about life. When that happens to you, you are going to a furnace of affliction. You sit down in the office and they even call your name and you cannot answer again. Not because you are depressed, you are thinking about life. You come to a point where nothing else makes meaning to you except His Majesty. Is God speaking to us? As a man of God, you come to a point where five months, nobody, you are praying and fasting and it's during that time, no invitation no honorarium right at that time you come to your fellowship and you find three people your sister your uncle the other guy who is coming to beg you those are the three people that are around yet you are making tremendous progress in the spirit and you do not understand the fullness of affliction you stand to preach the generator spoils everything scatters your ego has been stung. On top of that, you pray for somebody who is sick and the person doesn't get healed. And they say, Pastor, I, this thing you are teaching us, we are not getting it. You come to a point where you just play songs, you play hymns and you just sit down. Everything. Remember all those country music. This world is not my home. You just sit down. People say, why? I, I mean, life doesn't make sense. Hear me. Don't just laugh. It's the furnace of affliction. Don't think it's happening because of lack of faith. If no one has taught you, rejoice when you are going through those things. Because sooner or later is a proof that you must arrive somewhere. Your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. God taught me this. God taught me. I didn't read it in any book. God himself taught me that the fullness of affliction is the school of is part of the curriculum in the school of the spirit. No matter how anointed you are, I give you a guarantee under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must pass through that school. For you to be an approved man, that badge, you don't buy it, you don't bribe your way through it. The badge is a scar. A scar is a sign that your wound has healed. It's also a sign that there was once a wound. Let no man trouble me. For I bear. I went through it. Don't think I jumped the classes in the spirit. I went through it. God told you that you are going to become a financial prosperity giant. Get set for times of hunger. Let me tell you. A day will come the heavens will shut on purpose. Please hear me. If you like tight fire. Some of us that tight fire brigade fearful tight. Lord watch it all. I'm dropping this thing. If the heaven doesn't... There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Listen, there was a time I gave everything that I had. Nothing was happening. I've just said you, I could not afford a suit. Let me tell you. And I feared God. I used to go for ministrations. I will never forget one time I went for a ministration. Rain beat me. It was time for the ministration. No car to pick me. Right? The church is, is around, is, is not too far from here. This secondary school, somewhere there. One church that invited me, it was raining. And they were ringing my phone. They didn't. That time there was no protocol, no nothing. But I had prayed and fasted. And I got up. I said, Lord, no matter what it is. Everywhere was a pool of water and it was muddy. I came out, held my Bible and I started praying in tongues. Let me tell you. I said, I'm going there. I was praying. Shake I said, Lord, I pass through it with joy. A day will come. People will hear me. When I got there to make matters worse, it was Steve Strings that saw me coming and he ran out with an umbrella to help me and bring me in. When I got to the church, they made me to stay outside so that they would arrange a seat for me to sit down. There was no seat. When I got there, they were acting all kinds of drama and they were laughing. 
and then after everything they whispered to me that please i have 15 minutes i should think of how to patch the time so that i can i can i can be snappy about it it's called the fullness of affliction three days fasting not not nonsense fasting six to six with proper spiritual exercises to go for it's called the fullness of affliction Many of you have grace, but nobody is honoring you. A day will come, they will honor you. Don't run too fast. If you jump classes, life will bring you back. There were times I preached, there was no... After the preaching, come Sam. They said, uh, my brother. Ah! You said you are a young man where? They used to call me Bro Josh then. Not Apostle. Apostle Fire. Bro Josh. Where? where ah, you are a young man. Uh, may God honor you. The way you are going. You will be a bright young man. May God bless you. I just stop a bike outside. Bike! And I climb happily and I go home. No honorarium, no nothing. It was the fullness of affliction. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It was building me so that my motivation behind the pursuit of God would not be money and honorariums. I didn't have money to buy a shirt. I used to go somewhere. There was one BLW guy. He always used to dry clean his suit and keep for me. So when there's any ministration, I'll run to him and collect. And then one of my friends, I'll go and collect his shoes. That's how I will join everything. My younger sister posted one of the pictures of one of the crusades. And I looked at myself. It was as if I entered inside. I entered inside a tabloid. I was lean to nonsense. I had fasted my life out. Lean until I became, I became like, look, don't just laugh because it's happening to you. And the devil wants to deceive you to stop the process. Pass through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pass through it. Let people mock you. You're a pretty lady. Nobody's even looking at you. You know that this is not the issue of demons. Demons have been dealt with. When will my change come? God says for others they can go, but you. He said, God, what did I do to you? Many of you have been asking God. God is saying, uh uh, it's because you are different. Stay behind. The devil can tell you there is an RNG we can do for you. If one brother that is roaming around looking for a wife, if you are interested, we can we can come in and pretend as it is all those all those things. People use those strategies and they compromise. Hallelujah. They compromise. Say, I will not compromise. Say one more time, I will not compromise. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He said, all the days of my appointed time. I remember the day I got one proper on a radio. I mean proper, you know what I mean by proper. Something sizable enough for you to smile and say, this looks like the anointing I carry. That day I went back and I was smiling and God told me to sew it. I said, come on, Lord. Abba. And I did gladly. Listen. Part of what some of you receive tonight is not an anointing to go and start a church or to prove to your fellowship that I have arrived. It's going to be a lonely road. It's already happening to some of us. Right? You graduated and you finish school and you are smiling and you drop your you know that everybody can help you but nothing has happened brothers and sisters don't let men look at you and think that it's because you are lazy and foolish there is a dealing of the spirit hallelujah come sweet and good. let me tell you come on, come on, come on. let me tell you something about this lady this lady is a graduate of banking and finance are you seeing this She's a graduate of banking and finance and has been in a dealing with the, with the spirit. She left Asaba and she's going to be in Zaria for the next, probably the next, maybe close to a year because there is a prophetic dealing of the spirit that is doing in her life. Are you getting me? Certified and approved by her mother. It takes crazy men to carry the anointing of the spirit. Against popular status quo. Praise the Lord. Banking and finance with even French again. Yet, for the excellency of that which she believes is locked up in her spirit. Let me tell you, if you want to be like everybody, you will suffer like everybody. If you are afraid of being different because of what 
Do you just try to be different? The accusations are fierce. Everybody will say, we are not doing it like this. So don't be a stupid person. Wisdom is profitable to direct. When God is telling you, go left. All prophets, like the ones in the Bible would say, go right. It's always been right. God will say, you, go left. It's a lonely road. But it's the fullness of affliction. God is speaking to some of us here. There are some of us seated here, inside and outside. You trekked from your house or from your whatever, your office or from school to come here. And if you don't get boss, you are trekking back. Don't complain. See it as the school. There is a lecturer talking to you in the spirit. Pay attention. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's no money coming from anywhere. Brother, if there is no money, relax. Get a cup of water and drink and smile. And know that the world will celebrate you. There is nothing happening in my life right now that is surprising me. I'm only grateful about it. Hallelujah. Sister, when God is done with you, then you will know why he trained you. When you see the kind of man he brings and the responsibility that is waiting, you will know why your training was different. Are you getting what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to? Many of us are seated here, although we are smiling. Please play my notes. Listen. We are smiling, but there are wounded soldiers sitting looking at me. There are many of you, this is how you held yourself spiritually to come here. Is you, you packed yourself and the remaining of you and came for Koinonia. A lady came, they brought her in from Kaduna. Gas exploded on her. Gas, cooking gas exploded on her, burnt her face, burnt her limbs. And I was calling this lady and she said, when can we come and see you? I said this morning, I thought they were joking. By 7 o'clock, the whole family, they carried themselves and they came. They carried the lady when I looked at that lady. And she was declaring the faithfulness of God. Beautiful lady turned to nonsense as a result of gas. Gas burnt her, her feet. And she loves God. Right? Many of you are touching your face. Nothing is happening to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know when I sat down and I prayed with this lady, while I was praying with her, her bond hands, she held my hands. And as she was crying, I could see these ladies. You, you could sense what she was saying, I'm not giving up, Lord, you are faithful. When I finished praying, she said I should take her. She said she wants to walk by herself. And she told her mom, she said she wants to show the devil. She wants to put the devil to shame. That's what she said. And this girl got up step by step. We were going and she was walking. Tomorrow you will see this woman raising wheelchairs on crusade grounds. When she sees people with wheelchairs, the school she passed through created a memory. And that memory brings the anointing. That's why sometimes you see me sit down during miracle services. I've gone through some pain enough in my life. We say we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched. When was he touched? During the furnace of affliction. There are many preachers who are so innocent from what is happening to members. They don't know what is happening, so they don't know how to preach. They don't know how to love. They don't know how to be there. I've suffered hunger. There are times that people come to meet me and say, Apostle, as I am like this, I've not eaten. And I look and I say, I understand. No matter what it is, don't give up. They are trying to fight tears in their eyes. I say, don't give up. Don't be afraid. I told you crying is allowed. In the furnace of affliction, crying is allowed. Cry and wipe your tears and pass through. Your father looks at you and says, you claim there are people here among us. One of us here was disowned by his parents completely. There are a number of us like that on account of our faith and our, I mean disowned for real. They have been on their own. There are students here who are sourcing school fees by themselves. Every one naira comes by faith. I speak a word to you. Don't you think God has rejected you? You are passing through what will make you a principality in your time. That's how great men are there. I fasted for many days with nothing to break the fast. But I knew God was faithful. Hallelujah. God. That's why today, if you like, bring, bring, Bring a bottle of drink that is one million and give me. I'll drink it, drop it, and continue what I'm doing. 
because I've passed through a fullness of affliction that gives me the appreciation to love people at every level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Affliction. It makes you to love people. I went through things in my life I would never want anybody to go through. It creates the true spirit of love. This army are men and women that for now, let me tell you, all over the earth, they are not manifesting yet, brothers and sisters. Many of them are still passing through the fullness of affliction. Some of you, it was your pain and tears that brought you to Koinonia. There is, there is an evil in your family waiting. And you are the one who is trying to emerge. And you who is trying to bring your family into victory and deliverance. The devil is, is making them walk against you. Is that true? Some of you, after this koinonia, you are going back home. And the spirits have gone in advance to manipulate and orchestrate trouble. Some of you, as you are reaching home, is with a slap, they welcome you. They say you went to the guy's house and you keep quiet. It's not time to defend yourself. Receive the slap or realize that a principality, a reformer, is on his way to rise. Who is God speaking to? A reformer is on his way. There are many of you, people offend you and they do nasty things, but God tells you, get up and go and apologize to them. And you say, God, for what? I did and God says, that's not, get up, go and apologize to them. Get up and go and apologize to them. There are times God will carry, tell you to get your best gift and give your worst enemy. It's a fullness of affliction. It's a place of beauty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have the capacity to wax an album. You are about to wax the album and God says you are on your own. You are on your own with that album. He said, instead, carry the money and go and sow it to somebody. And remain. Ha. I wish what I was saying were a lie. But it's true. You will pass through it. Some of you are going through it right now. You will pass through it. Brothers and sisters, the first crusade we went for, I think we were, I don't know if we were up to 50 or more than 50. But I preached my life out. We healed those we could heal. And we gave Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. There is a prophetic word upon your life. That is why your life is the way it is going. Please listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is a prophetic word. Some of you have written jam for years. Nothing has happened. Your colleagues have gone ahead of you and even graduated. Don't worry. There is a hand that is moving you. You may not see it. You may cry through the night. But I'm speaking to you. There is a hand that is moving you. There is an anointing you will soon encounter. In the place of your pain. Where, where you sit down and there is nothing to do. All of a sudden you will find an anointing. There is a squeezing out. A pressing. Like what my knee will call it. A breaking of the outer man. And a release of the spirit. There is a breaking. You are, you are rising to a realm in the spirit. Sister, continue the prayers. Continue the Bible study. Don't worry. You may look like a fool. Continue. I spoke to a woman who told me that there was a time she was using groundnut oil. God is my groundnut oil. You know groundnut oil? To rub on her body. And she said, it will be great and it will be better for me one day. You want to be great the fullness of affliction is your passport this message may not be pleasant it's a series we're taking it's called the emergence we're looking at the making of reformers the mystery of the fullness of affliction where men are made it is the place you will cry your cry till there is no tears to cry again it is the place you will call for help and heaven is silent it is the place where your challenges keep multiplying before your face by the day it comes to a point where as the mountains surround jerusalem that's how everything has surrounded you where you are praying for something to be better another thing comes up the bible says they kept mounting themselves on job first his animals and everything died lightning came and scattered his building then he was told that he still one report after the other and job just sat on the ground he said naked i came and he began to speak a lot of things 
let me tell you something the fullness of affliction will get you to a point where you can't talk again your silence becomes your prayer and god hears it because that is the time you will be talking the loudest you sit down you can't open your mouth to say god is unfaithful but to say god is faithful becomes difficult and it's not a sign of unbelief hallelujah that's the point where everything in your life does not seem to work yet you are making spiritual progress yet you are growing spiritually you are suffering from a sickness that you are healing others of you lay hands on them and the power of god gets them free but you have prayed and fasted for months and this thing does not go i bring you a matured message to the body of christ there is a making of reformers across the entire earth these men their dealings look harsh but my brothers let me tell you something do you know how the eagle trains the eaglet to, to fly it picks it up and throws it away and just allows it if you do and it keeps moving around and then eventually it comes back picks it up takes it back and throws it away that's why the eagle does not just fly it soars when other birds are moving around the eaglets when i was an eaglet i went to a lot there are things you go through in life that kills fear somebody looks at you and holds a gun and says i will kill you all of a sudden you remember how many in my life too many things do you know why i don't fear cars jam me one huh you see all the things that have happened in my life no human being born of a woman can kill me i'm telling you this it's not pride you don't know i told you i've entered car where the armed robbers were shooting I, I, okay no they didn't shoot we we're coming from portacourt right armed robbers i was sitting on c2 luxurious bus you know c2 the one that the, the driver is down you are the one in front there are perils you go through in life that make you mature that's what releases the anointing life has squeezed you so much there's nothing to squeeze there again you are a dead man in christ you have no reputation of yourself and then when you never expect it the light will shine it will never happen when you, joseph never saw in a vision that by the next day he will be the prime minister probably he now said oh lord let me be in this prison for five more years five years is enough for me not knowing that that was the last night he would have been grateful if he was told that he would stay just five more years but that night he was at the entrance of another realm leaving the furnace of affliction forever hallelujah I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to trek from that place near Chicken Republic till aviation. I was trekking like a fool on the streets of Zaria. If I meet you with that madness and I say I want to marry you, what will you go and tell your father? You say, Daddy, there is a, a madman, there is an idiot that claims God is calling him. Your father has enough, my daughter. Right? Shege barata kalabaya. Lord, for you, I will do it. I may look like a madman, but so be it. Look, it takes unusual people. The fullness of affliction makes you a human being plus something else. Right? And that's what you need. A human being plus an anointing. A human being plus a grace. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Let me stop here because of that. The making. The making. There is a making, brothers and sisters. There are many of us who have been bereaved. There are some of us, a lot has happened to you. There are some of us, what you are seeing in the spirit and what is happening in your life are east and west. I bring you a word. It is a furnace of affliction. If it has an entrance, it has an exit. You may walk through it so slow, but the day you will come out, you, you will be without information. You will, you will step into an anointing you will never recover from. You will step into a level of grace you will never recover from. The day Jesus appeared to me, I was not prepared for that visitor. I just loved him. I wanted him with my life. And then he appeared to me. I perceive in my spirit that there are some of us who are coming to the end of those seasons of affliction. They have lasted years. 
you have done ev- let me tell you when that season comes to an end you don't need connection everything works for you including your enemies it's a sign that that season has ended and so god stamps it upon your life jesus died and was in the grave all of a sudden while they were discussing his death jesus the christ he got up he was on his way to emmaus and two people were saying have you had ah this weekend was a bad weekend for the disciples so jesus died and the man said really he died brothers and sisters but he only died for three days what you are passing through will not kill you if you would have killed you you would have died since this is how you know it's a furnace of affliction because in it you never die you go through everything that can kill you but when all the dust settles you are still standing this is a message for you to preach to some of our parents they have done their best some of you right now you are the ones feeding your families although you are students it's you that sends money mommy take 2k and your mother is saying lord where will you change our story tell her mommy there is a reform arising in this house that is the reason like the blood that was put there is a mark that is upon this family as 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 we are sitting there are mega ministries that are rising but listen it will not rise by claiming your tears is what will qualify you to climb that altar that's what will make your altar sacred that's what will make your anointing uncommon it is good to receive impartations but in the furnace of affliction you dig your own well by yourself you dig that well until you find the water we are going to pray there is nothing that you are passing through that is forever i want you to know this are you hearing what i'm saying when you pass through it you will know that god is a miracle worker when you pass through it you will know that god is mighty rise up on your feet and let's pray this is how the reformers will emerge the first dimension of the dealings of the spirit is the mystery that is shrouded in the furnace of affliction you will pass through pain you will pass through rejection you will pass through criticism they will misunderstand you you don't need to defend yourself you will pass through all kinds of things the bible says do not count it as though it's a strange thing when you pass through fiery trials lift your voice and begin to pray koinonia everyone pray i draw strength i draw strength from the journey ahead i draw strength for the journey ahead pray i draw strength in the name of the lord jesus i draw strength for the days of criticisms i draw strength for the days of weaknesses the days when there is no result in my life the days when there is no result in my church the days when there is no result in my career i draw strength to face the carryovers that i have i draw strength to face the mockery i draw strength to face this pain this sickness in my body i've been married for five years no child i draw strength go ahead and pray he said and elijah went in the strength of that bread 40 days journey and elijah went in the strength of that bread pray I draw strength for my family. They may be persecuted. My father has lost his job, mother lost her job, but I draw strength. The storms do not come to kill me. They come to make a reformer out of me. I am part of the program of God. I'm part of the program of God. I may cry for now. I may weep for now. I may not have a helper. But I lift my eyes onto the hill. From whence cometh my help. I may pass through the fire. It will prune me. It will discipline me. It will teach me 
obedience but in the name of Jesus I will not give up hallelujah prayer point number two make a vow with destiny that I will not give up until I become a reformer I will not give up the sword of God is waiting for those who finish to be given that mantle that anointing for your ministry for your business pass through it lift your voice and pray I'm not giving up I'm not giving up no matter what happens I may cry but I will not give up I may weep there is an anointed man rising from this pain out of these ashes out of these ashes there is a general a custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom the reward for the pain is the anointing the reward for the pain is the anointing the reward for the pain the reward for the scar the reward for the crying is a new song he will give you a song in the spirit you will do great business for the kingdom therefore arise pass through it i bring you a prophetic word pass through it it will not kill you the storms will rise the storms will rise you will forget but pass through it you will cry many times pass through it you will endure you will endure hardship you will endure hunger pass through it I won't give up I refuse to give up there is a reformer there is a principality there is an anointing coming out through my pain there is an anointing Tori, I'm writing history hallelujah hallelujah listen the last prayer point is we are going to declare the faithfulness of God some of you are crying don't let it embarrass you you are going to say Lord through the pain I say to the heavens you are faithful I've been mocked but you are faithful I saw the carryover but my God you are faithful they called me a failure they sacked me from the job but Lord you are faithful he said he will marry me after introduction he talked me God you are faithful God you are faithful I lost my brother through the pain you are faithful I lost my father through the pain you are faithful I lost my pain you are faithful my integrity has brought me trouble you are faithful my integrity has brought me pain you are faithful you are faithful my integrity has brought me a carryover you are still faithful my integrity in ministry has relegated me to the background you are faithful for i will like an edifice though he slay me yet will i praise him and all the days of my life i will wait what i will wait i will be misunderstood but i will wait when all is said and done the purposes of the kingdom will be planted to me hallelujah we have one minute i'd like you to pair yourselves into two and speak strength into your brother you may be the whole you may be holding the hands of someone who came to this place ready to give up i'd like you to speak strength and say there is a supply of the spirit i speak to you you saw your result yesterday seven carryovers you don't know where you will start from but i speak strength from the throne 
they threw you away from the job and they said what you study cannot give you a living your ministry seems to have died no one is recognizing your grace but I speak strength speak strength Prophesy strength. Don't give up. I release strength upon you. You can't give up at this time. You have gone through too much. You have gone through too much. You are already getting to the end. Don't give up. I supply spirit power. I supply strength from the throne in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now look at me very quickly. I want to pray specially. And I just want you to indicate by lifting your hands, you don't need to come out here. There are people who came tonight and all you came to do is to receive strength. You have come to the end of your road. Please, not everybody. I just want you to lift your hands as I minister to you. Things have happened. You had news in your family. Humanly speaking, there's no strength to continue. This thing has worried you. You can't even pray again. You have prayed every prayer you know how to pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus, receive a supply of the strength of the Spirit. I speak to you. You are coming out of this. You are coming out generals before you have passed through it they didn't die you will not die in it your redeemer still lives he may look silent but he will speak he may look silent but he's preparing a table before you you may not have money in your pocket but i want you to know that you shouldn't compromise the hand of your god is coming for you in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for families here represented who have come to the end of the road you have done all you know to do and nothing seems to be working i want to announce to you that there is prophecy at work in your life there is the making of a reformer it's part of the birthing process zion does not give birth without traveling he said as soon as zion travails there is a there is there is a a, a labor pain in the spirit and it's because of what is about to be birthed in your life pass through the pain like a woman passes through the pain it may last for hours for some women it may last for days others it may even require surgery but make sure the baby is not lost make sure you keep it because that baby represents your prophetic destiny keep that vision cry but keep the vision in the mighty name of jesus christ lift your hands and begin to thank god